Hello, hello. Let's see. I am going to start my video. Okay. Good. See, I'm going to unmute everyone as much as I can. Let's see. Yes, the video uh, with Susan Cain talking about the power of introverts. And like you said, you might, you thought initially it was a little bit more super, super superficial, just this idea of introversion. Yes, yes. But as you get deeper into it, you realize it's much more. Yes. I thought that um, the story of the book or uh, it's, it's, um, Yes, something different. Something like uh, you need to 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 be social for something, uh, etc. But no, it's the opposite thing that they uh, uh, prove that is better and mm -hmm. nice uh, uh, ideas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and the <clears throat> it was interesting because the book. The book was very, um, it went very deep into this idea yes. of introversion and we'll go through it. You know, I have an outline that we can go through um, with the book, especially if you haven't read it, then it kind of, I'll help, help kind of summarize the book and talk about key points. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was a very deep and heavy book. I actually didn't read the whole thing <laughs> mm, okay. because um it was getting really long and hard to get through but i went and researched some summaries and uh found a teacher's guide actually i found this so it's uh, a teacher's guide to the book <laughs> uh, okay and it helped me kind of organize a, a presentation today so that um uh, I probably got halfway through the book, but it just was taking a long time. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it, there's a lot of research that she goes through in the book. Mm -hmm. um, but it, really great information. Um, so I'm glad that we can go through a summary of it today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. We're good. Interesting. I wonder if you can see me. I can't see you. Um, so you can turn on. Oh, here I can ask you to start the video. Okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, it is more fun to see you. Hi, David. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Good. And it looks like Dragos. Are you there, Dragos? Okay. So we're going to start the video later. Dragos might be in a situation where we can't, where he can't. Uh, speak sometimes the people sometimes our students join during work or some situation like that yes. so so i was curious to see who would show up for this book club meeting because it was such a heavy book like a, a really dense book uh, meaning lots of um it was long and very research heavy um whether we would get a lot of people who have read the book or not um, and sometimes if they don't read the book, sometimes it's hard to kind of show up for the book, more, book club meeting, um, even though I don't really mind people coming if they didn't read it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if anybody kind of shows up as we get started, but um, otherwise we'll have a little discussion between the two of us, David. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and jump into my presentation and the slides that I have. Um, and we'll kind of talk through it that way. Okay. And I'm, I'm recording this webinar so, or this, um, this book club meeting so that people can review it later um, if they couldn't show up to the, the lesson today. Mm -hmm. All right, good. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And Dragos, if you are listening, um, and can hear me, go ahead and type in the chat box. Maybe you can't talk or anything, but if you can type in the chat box and I can actually, um, uh, I can see 
anything you write in the chat box. So if you do have any comments or things to share as we go along, that's a good way um, to let me know um, or participate in that way. Okay. Okay, Dragos just uh, just chatted in there, and I'm going to go ahead and change it so that everyone can kind of see the chat box as they would like. Um, or you can send a message to everyone, or you can send a message just to me. So that option is there in the chat box. Hi, Carmen. Here, let me uh, unmute you. There we go. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Good. So tell me, uh, did you were you able to read this book? This I month? was. I was not able to finish, but I I read a lot. Okay, good. I was just telling David I didn't finish it either, <laughs> but uh, it was a long book, right? Yeah. Um, but we have a good. I was able to find some good resources to help me with the kind of an outline of of it um today and touch on the most important key points from the book so it'll be good and david carmen and david and carmen introduce you, <laughs> you can uh, Hi, see each other there there we go um all right we're gonna go ahead and jump in here today um and i don't know when i move around the video the our videos. Can you guys see that or do you control your videos? I don't want to be moving things around if it's distracting here. So, okay. So I'll go ahead here um, with the presentation here. Um, okay. So our book this month and we, with Pronunciation Pro, we do a, a, a book club meeting every month and we choose a book that we read on our own. And then we come at the end of the month to discuss it. And there are a few different reasons that we do this. Um, first of all, it's fun. <laughs> I think it's fun. I think it's fun to um, have a book club. A book club, what it does for me at least, is it, it gives me a timeline. I know I want to read. And I know that it's going to make my life better. And it's going to improve my understanding of different concepts. And when I make a goal to read every month, a lot of times it's hard to do that unless you have something like a book club meeting to show up to and say, here's my deadline. Here's when I need to have that, the book read or you know, prepare for something um, for a discussion. Um, and it kind of kicks that, um, kicks, that, kicks that into gear where you're doing, able to do what you want to do um, is it the same for you guys have you guys been in a situation well with pronunciation pro or with other courses and things it helps to have a deadline doesn't it yeah yeah okay yes, it's, it's real also yes yes it helps all of us i think yes um so that's a that's a great thing about a book club is being able to have that accountability um another thing is just uh our the pronunciation pro students our our community here we're all from very different places in the world and i find it fascinating to hear the thoughts and ideas of people from all sorts of different backgrounds as we read a book and we find the common elements you know common understanding there i think it helps with just our overall um, understanding of each other and um and accepting of each other and it just creates this bonding and community um, among us that i think is important um, as we understand that we're all human and we are all kind of having this human experience no matter where we're from or what we're doing there's there's a lot of these ideas that are common to all of us um, and i find it fascinating to kind of hear all of your thoughts and ideas on different topics that we talk about through these books okay um all right, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. Can you guys see that? All? Okay. Perfect. All right, good. Um, okay, so the, the book this month, it was the, uh, the book Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking was the name of it by Susan Cain. 
and she herself is an introvert and um and has really taken it upon herself to say hey look introversion is not a bad thing in american culture we kind of have this idea that it is a bad thing for some reason and actually i have to i had to laugh because yesterday i was telling my father that um that i was reading reading this book and doing a presentation on it and i said it's about um the power of introverts and his his reaction was is there such thing as a powerful introvert <laughs> So it just fed this idea that sh that Susan Cain is is talking about and trying to kind of fight against is this idea that introversion in the American culture tends to have a, a negative connotation to it. Um, so we'll go into we'll kind of dive into that today and talk about more in depth about that. All right. So just to kind of set the stage, we're talking about different personality types. Okay. So. There's extrovert, who it tends to be more outgoing, confident, assertive, um, more frequently desire social interaction. So that's where they get their energy is from other people and being around other people and they have this um, feeling about them. Here, let me, I'm realizing that uh, it's, I have to unmute everyone when they show up. So. I don't know how I change that. Let me, there we go. Let's see. I'm trying to unmute you, Radwan, but I'm not sure why it's not. Oh, sorry. Unmute audio. There we are. Okay, and Radwan, hi, how are you? Hi. All right. I'm glad to see you back again in the new book club. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's really interesting. Good. So I wanted to get a feel from you here at the beginning. We're just getting started talking about the different personality types. Um, I have both Carmen and I have weren't able to finish the book, but I kind of did some research to get a summary together. Um, were you able to read this book, Radwan? Yeah. Uh, actually, I just made it uh, through half of this book. I was depending on my. Uh, speed reading abilities to finish it in two days. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, this book has uh, so many details. She has made a great effort in putting things together. Uh, so I felt like uh, deep in my heart, I felt not jumping information up. So I couldn't finish more than half, uh, yeah. almost 140 pages out of almost I think half we the book. I think we all kind of had that same experience where it was, it got a little heavy and a little long, you know, and so it was hard to, hard to finish, but I'm glad that we have, we can kind of go through the key points because there was, there was a lot of good um, points that she made through it. So we'll kind of go through that. Okay, Rodwan, one, I, one thing I want to mention, um, so just be aware of background noise. I'm going to keep you unmute, unmuted. Um, sure, but so there, there are, here, everybody's out, I couldn't find any. So what, I'm going, so what I'm going to have you do is go ahead and mute yourself unless you have something to say and then you can unmute. Um, so you can kind of control that and it can keep the audio, you know, the background audio in check. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so we were just going through um, and let me know if someone new shows up because I do have um, limited view when I'm in full screen mode. Um, of seeing who's who's here and who's not. Okay, so we're just talking about extroverts being outgoing, confident, assertive, and frequently desire social interaction. Introverts are more introspective, okay? They're more reserved, contemplative, and they often need more time alone to reflect on their thoughts, emotions, and experiences. Okay, so these are the different personality types. Now it is kind of a on a continuum, okay? It's on a spectrum here. It's not like, we ever have one totally introvert person or, or, so, or completely extrovert. You're rarely just one or the other. Um, a lot of times you're somewhere in the middle there. Um, now for all of you, as you were kind of reading or as you think about introversion and extroversion, um, where, do you, where do you see yourself falling on this? 
Carmen, do you kind of have an idea for yourself? Right. Yes, I saw yeah. myself in the book. In the book? <laughs> so okay. I, I saw myself in the book. So I'm an introvert, uh, but I would not say that I'm a shy person. So I, um, uh, she explains it right at the beginning. There's a difference between shyness and uh, an introvert person. So, um, so explain to us kind of how she describes that in the book as far as shyness. What what? you know, shyness versus introvert, like what's the difference there? Uh, so she ex explained uh, shyness as um, a situation in a person that hurts the person. Uh, uh, the uh, person is not really happy to be shy and that's why she is, uh, the person is uh, more laid back and um, mm -hmm. more um, quiet. Okay. Um, an introvert person uh, does exactly know what uh, what uh, the person is able to do, mm -hmm. but she's more confident. Uh, the, the person is more confident in uh, making sure everything the person does uh, goes the right way. Okay. Okay, so shyness is more of that, like, oh, there's, there's some pain associated with that and talking yeah, and things yeah. like that which doesn't necessarily, so shyness and introversion is not the same thing. No. You know, it's not the same thing. You can be an introvert and more quiet, but not shy. And yeah. I think that's what you're describing as yourself is that you, you know, you, you, you relate to that introversion idea, but not the shyness. No, idea. no, I'm not shy, but I, I like to listen to other people and yeah. then uh, build up my, my own opinion and uh, yeah. if I decide I have something to explain or to say then I yeah. will do it. Okay excellent and that yeah. probably has evolved better as you've gotten older and more confident yeah, sure, sure, you sure. are I'm guessing yeah yeah that tends to happen with all of us is there's a little bit more confidence as we get older um, even in that you know where that shyness maybe you maybe you could have been more shy younger um, but have but have gotten more comfortable with yourself. And, and also an introvert person would not do things uh, the person knows exactly is not able to do it. Mm, an okay. extrovert person would just uh, say, uh, let's try it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. What about you, David? Do you kind of, this idea of introversion, extrovert, um, do you kind of, where do you kind of see yourself on that spectrum? Well, uh, <clears throat> in my case, uh, maybe a little more introvert. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and sometimes uh, also a, a, a shine type. But uh, I think that one important thing is in the situation. For example, mm -hmm. for me, it's very important uh, to... Uh, to um, to social action, social activities, the academic activity and the um, other kind of, of of activity. For example, in my in my case, in the academic uh, field, I I'm a little more extrovert. Okay. <laughs> but different to my personal um, uh, activities. Yes. I, in this kind of things, I prefer uh, to be a, a little more introvert because I need to think in the things, mm -hmm. to, et cetera. But in the other aspects, I, I'm a little more extrovert. So okay. I'm a little more uh, towards introvert. <laughs> okay. So in some situations you're you're one way and other situations you're other. And so so what they describe in the book is that's more of what they kind of in the middle of it is what we call an ambient perso personality and it it means it kind of means exactly what you just described is that, you know, in some situations I am, in some situations I'm not, you know, I kind of am there in the middle. And that's where I kind of find myself too is, you know, in some situations I can be more extroverted and get that energy from other people. And in other situations, I just want to be alone. I want to think, I want to go, you know, I just want some time on my own. So 
there is kind of that that middle section of ambient. Okay. What about you, Radwan? So uh, I thought of myself as more to extrovert side. Uh -huh. uh, but taking the test, she's simplifying uh, too many questions yeah. in the book, uh, in her chapter. Um, I got um, scored um, out of 20. You got so what out of 20? 13. 13. 13. 13. Okay. 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 okay, so maybe okay, you so are in that area. area. Oh, I'm getting a... Oh, no. I'm getting a... No. Here, mute. go ahead and mute yourself real quick. I can hear on the calls. Yeah. So, uh, it's, uh, I, I thought I would be more to extrovert side, but I found myself more to ambivert or more to introvert according to the test. So, it depends on the situation, as, uh, as my friend here said. Yeah. Uh, so, sometimes, as David said, mentioned that in, in, in some situations where we are familiar with a job or something, tend to be more extrovert and uh, sometimes in other unfamiliar situations we tend to be at the corner and uh, just like when you go to, to a room some people just go directly to the middle of the room and sit in the, in the smack in the center some others prefer the corner so i start noticing what uh, what i'm doing and i found that i sometimes prefer to stay at the corner and notice so uh, yeah. that's more to un it's that's more the introvert side, but some other situations and um, my job and my work I try to be in the center, try to show up and I enjoy drive my energy from others uh, yeah. around me, try energy from uh, you know lecturing and uh, seminaring, try to uh, outrage my colleagues. So I, I was more introvert. So it's a concept. I think uh, she went to uh, this book. Uh, Susan can want to, to be an opener for all of us that uh, uh, how can we deal with different aspects of our personality, uh, either it is inherited or uh, just like uh, it's, uh, it's something that we can deal with uh, or we can change in different uh, situations in our life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's uh, the great thing about these uh, books like this, and it does help us become more mindful and think more internally of like, you know, what, what do I like more? What, you know, what, it, it kind of has you asking yourself questions and um, being more reflective on yourself and, and understanding yourself a little bit more. That's what I found. And it sounds like as you were reading this, you were kind of noticing more and more different situations and how you, how you responded to those different situations. Like sometimes I go to the you know, middle of the room, sometimes I'm in the corners and just like, what is it that caused us to kind of move from one side of the scale to the other um, and adjust that way. So good thoughts, good thoughts. And I just put down at the end uh, a link there at the bottom about um, they do have like this little introvert test on um, Susan Kane's website. It's very, uh, it, it's very, uh, it's a very short test. It's not a very in-depth depth test, but you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. Um, at the beginning of the book, there is that that quiz. Um, that Radwan was re referencing that um, kind of get, gave us an idea. I think it was a 20 question quiz and gave us an idea of um, where you are on the scale. All right, so going into American culture and what the reason this book got the response that it did, so it's a, a New York Times bestseller and you know there was a huge response from this book, I think because there's a lot of these, in, a lot of introverts Especially, especially in the U.S., introverts that have been thought to be kind of the inferior personality. <laughs> okay, and I think that this this awakened something in a lot of people, saying, "I'm an introvert, and it's okay to be an introvert because in American culture, what has happened." She talks about this a lot at the beginning of the book is that we have kind of this introvert ideal. And there are certain places in, around the, 
you know, other places around the world that have this as well. But I think that in the American culture, it's a pretty strong thing where um, there's America's social bias. So this extrovert ideal is explaining America's social bias that favors or even exalts extroverts and criticizes introverts. And it's that notion that that characteristics of extroverted personalities, which are assertive, uh, char or assertiveness, charisma, gregarious, social dominance, reflect a superior type of personality, okay, or person. All right, so this is that, that extrovert ideal that people have. This is why my father was like, you know, are, is there power in introverts? <clears throat> you know, that's the ideal. He's reflecting that ideal that has been basically proclaimed for a hundred years is what Susan Cain is saying, that there was a hundred, there's been a hundred years worth of this, um, and this, you know, bias that has been happening. So the main idea I got from, <clears throat> from this, um, and maybe Carmen, you can go ahead and read that for us. Will you read that for us? Okay. Yeah. Main idea. The notion of extrovert uh, supremacy has not always existed and like all forms of discrimination or bias free justice based on personality has many destructive consequences for the success and happiness of society as a whole mm -hmm. and that's what i love about this is that we take you know we're taking you know there's discrimination and there's bias all around us that we need to be more aware of and mindful of because a lot of times this this discrimination or this bias happens without us really thinking about it. And so what she's drawing attention to is this personality prejudice that happens in favor of the extrovert and, and against the introverts and saying, wait, 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 let's rethink this. Let's really, really rethink this because it can have very destructive consequences for our society as a whole if we have these prejudices against people probably half of our population is more introverted <laughs> than extroverted. And we need to be able to look and see how, you know, the strengths in both types of personalities um, and the weaknesses in both types of personalities. Okay, so there were kind of four different sections in this book. The first part, she went through culture history and current research. The second part, she goes over kind of the biology of it, the, our biological predisposition and environmental factors, kind of nature versus nurture. You know, what is it that causes, that, that um, makes an introverted personality? Um, <clears throat> then she goes into kind of the perspectives of culture and this bias or, or these different personalities. And then the fourth part is kind of working effectively together. How can we use both personalities and highlight and strengthen uh, each, each one of these personalities and how can we work together better. Okay, so we're gonna go through these four parts and kind of talk about different ideas within these four parts, okay? So part one, we're talking about the culture history and like the current research that's happening. So he talks about Dale Carnegie and he is one of the, you know, kind of early 1900s, he, he was really talking about, um, he started some public speaking classes. He's a very much an extrovert. And he kind of promoted this idea that you need to sell yourself, you need to be, you know, this very um, charismatic personality. And it started this culture of personality. Um, where there was rise of big business, there's a lot going on. And so we have this culture of personality that emerges um, in the United States. Okay, so there was one part in this, uh, in this book that we're talking about Tony Robbins and this workshop that Susan went to, the Unleash the Power Within. And I found this part to be really funny, actually. And, and it was interesting how it got such a reaction out of me because I think this was the introvert part of my personality that I would not want to go to one of those conferences. <laughs> like it was when I, when she was describing kind of the conference and the, you know, the excitement and the everybody's dancing and everybody has to kind of be more extroverted. I found myself getting like, Oh, like, 
almost tightening up kind of like I would not want to be in that environment and be forced to be this extroverted personality in that situation. What was, Carmen, what was your thoughts when you were reading? I had, I had exactly the same feelings. I was thinking how, why all those people uh, pay tons of millions of money dollars and go to a conference like this and then they end up doing crazy things they never had so thought uh, would do so it yeah. was it was a very funny part <laughs> so and you can, uh, you all of them all of them ended up going over that fire pitch mm -hmm. so it was like crazy yeah they said that at the end of the conference you're supposed to walk over coals hot coals and that was kind of the sign that you've, you know, you've overcome mind over body kind of situation. And, and you can tell from Susan's writing that she was in that mindset too of like, oh, she did not want to have to do all this stuff that all these other people were doing and what Tony Robbins was promoting, you know, needing, need everyone needing to be this extroverted personality. What about you, Rodwan? Did you kind of, uh, in that part, did it, with you being more, feeling more of an extrovert versus an introvert, did that kind of have the same response or was it different for you? Uh, regarding that uh, function of Tony Robbins. Uh, Robbins kind of conference that she talked about. Yeah, it's actually, I found that people spend a lot of money going to musical concerts and uh, some other festivals. And I think it's worth uh, Spending on something that's uh, really creational, like what Tony Robbins did. Uh, it was clearly uh, stated that uh, these sessions added to the Susan Open. Susan Here, go ahead and speak up a little bit more. The background noise is kind of overpowering your voice. Yeah. It's not clear? There, that's better. Mm -hmm. That's better. So it's it's clear from the uh, from Susan uh, talks about uh, so so the, the, this you know, this noise is part of extrovert life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to prove that I'm extrovert. <laughs> so uh, it's clear that uh, Susan could uh, enjoy the, the 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 atmospheric whether that uh, Tony Robbins party made and that uh, whatever Tony Robbins is doing. Uh, and that was stimulating the things that happened at the church. I don't know what that, the name of oh, yeah. the big church. And the, yes, so it's it's just like raising the energy in other people through mm -hmm. our energy, just like uh, um, just like borrowing energy from others, mm -hmm. and just like transmitting this energy from one person to other. And this is really very effective because when you are around uh, some energetic people, you get more energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, they say that if you if you give me five good people uh, in your friend chain, then you're gonna be the medium, or the average medium of uh, your five good friends. And this mm -hmm. is very true because we we draw energy from others and we just like distribute it equally. So if you are around losers, you will end up like like a loser, right? If you're around the good people who influence you and give you energy. And this is really interesting. So it's a good investment. I'm, I don't think it's a waste of time. Uh, for the American history, I believe that uh, she talked in depth about how uh, it used to be like the, the, the religion affected the, uh, the concept about the personality, what, what's good personality, what's bad personality. So at that time, introver introversion was the, uh, was the, 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 the model and everybody want to be uh, to look uh, decent and introverted was superior to the extroversion but mm -hmm. uh, with the with the people trying to sell everything even they trying to sell themselves as a models mm -hmm. so extroverts become more uh, kind of model and people want to follow them so they made a lot of money through selling books ideas concerts mm -hmm. everything so even this book itself has been sold in vast quantity and I'm sure it made, it's made a lot of money. So here, uh, two years of uh, hard work uh, really, uh, you know, was fruitful for here and for everybody. That's good. So I love that it's so interesting to, to me to hear about how when you're around energy, energetic people that you kind of feel that energy. And I think that's a, that shows a lot of more of your extrovert personality that you gain that energy from other people. 
because I think that someone who has more of an introverted personality, like she was describing in the book, like that's putting off to them. That doesn't, you know, for an introverted personality, being around more energetic people like that, yeah, she was kind of able to follow along, but it was exhausting to her. And so it can kind of have, I think that's what's nice about here and having even this um, discussion is we have different personalities in this, in this group right now. And, and your, your mindset is like, oh, well, if we surround ourselves with energetic people, we're going to be energetic. And maybe Carmen, and maybe you can kind of talk to this Carmen, to this as well. Carmen might say, no, that's exhausting to me. <laughs> you know, I don't like being in that situation because it depletes my energy. But I don't know. What do you think, Carmen? Um, I don't know. Does it, does it, uh, being, being around energetic people, does it raise your energy or does it lower your energy? Neither way. So neither way. Okay. I'm, I'm staying myself. So oh, I, okay. I might get some, uh, some ideas, uh, how to perform better in some ways, but, uh -huh. uh, most of the time I don't want to like, want to be like the other person. Oh, so okay. I'm happy with myself, so I'm, okay. I'm happy uh, to be the person I am. Been I am so. Yeah. Okay. So you're kind of more of that, you know, solid. It doesn't matter who's kind of around you or anything. You just kind of want to be no. more of that no. stable. No. Do you have any thoughts on that, David? Uh, well, I <laughs> I'm not sure if I understand all the the, the things, but uh, about the question that you uh, made. Uh, some seconds ago. Uh, I think that for me, uh, I um, lose energy with, uh, <laughs> with uh, extrovert uh, people because uh, yes, I need to, to think very fast. Um, it's, that is exorcist for me. Is uh, um, yes, for me it's um, nice to 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 meet other uh, person who uh, speaks um, like me, and maybe in in some uh, sense the same way. I mean, relax and not uh, very extrovert. Uh, yeah person because it's for me it's very very uh, um, uh, difficult <laughs> yeah okay and the idea I'm trying to get at here is there's no right or wrong answer in this you know it's not that one is better than the other it's that we all have our unique experience and our unique way of perceiving things and <clears throat> experiencing life and that everything's okay everything's gr good it's yes. just a matter of what everyone's experience is and understanding that someone else's experience may be different than yours. Go ahead, Radwan. This is the very uh, core of this book mm -hmm. that uh, really it's not, it does not matter if you are an introvert or an extrovert mm -hmm. because I got a lot of confusion whether I'm introvert or extrovert. Sometimes when she describes introverts, I say, oh, this is me. And whenever she talks about extroverts, uh, tendency to be this way, that way, oh, that's me. So I couldn't really get the, the idea. It's like confusing what I am, an extrovert or extrovert. So whatever you are, you are introvert or extrovert, it's important to know that uh, uh, both are equal, both are normal. But the, the only difference that introverts, they seem to function uh, very well in a quiet environment with his special prerequisites and extroverts they seem to be more uh, players in teamwork 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 and uh, in groups mm -hmm. so what we uh, uh, we get out of this that in the work environment in the schools in every uh, in every accommodation or in every situation, we need to consider introverts as we consider extroverts. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to force a group, a, a group learning uh, in schools, uh, ignoring all the individuals who are uh, who are more to be introverts, and they will benefit 
uh, gets most of the uh, most of learning out of their solitary and uh, having own own time and uh, learning uh, according to their individual code so they want silent environment so we need to consider introverts when we are uh, especially the legislator whenever we make laws whenever we're trying to change the educational system whenever we look at the university system in our different countries and nations whenever we consider the environment in every company and workplace so we need to consider both groups equally we need to um, nourish and uh, help uh, both groups to to grow uh, equally so this is the most important thing not to ignore introverts not to consider them diseased or uh, uh, you know not to consider them as a social failure or anything they are very that's what susan try to deliver everybody that mm -hmm. introverts are very normal they can be they are creative a lot of creativity has been there from introverts. Uh, Prophet Moses himself was introvert. Bill Gates himself is introvert. And these people are very creative. And they are mindful. They are able for... Uh, they have great ideas, but they will nourish and grow only in a specific environment. So ignoring them uh, uh, to the side of uh, making extroverts the trend in, every, in everything, uh, would be catastrophic to the whole environment, to whole country, to the whole policy we are following, and to our, you know, next generation. Because we are ignoring half of the very intelligent, talented ideas overall. Yes, yes. There we go. We could end on that right there because you just summed up the book. <laughs> well, let's dive into some more of those ideas because it, you're absolutely right. Is that the more we understand these different personalities and realize that the, you know, the strengths of both the more that we can organize our education better, the more that we can organize our, our work environments better to facilitate both. Um, <clears throat> another example that Susan Cain used was in Harvard Business School. Um, there's kind of this assumption that the extroverts are always gonna make better leaders. And she kind of, she kind of talks about this idea of, you know, it's assertiveness, not correctness, that determines, sorry, I'm the, things in my way here, hold on, that determines whose ideas are chosen. Yeah, so it's these, these uh, more assertive people that are getting their ideas chosen, whereas sometimes it's not the best idea. Um, and we see that in classrooms is that the more extroverts are gonna get their ideas out and they're gonna be talkative, talkative and things, and the introverts who may have better ideas and better understanding of the, the concept, just won't get their ideas out there and we need to kind of facilitate that better. Um, the research that she was finding is that with more extroverted leaders are better with um, more passive employees. So employees who just who are more willing to follow along with whatever the extroverted leader wants to do versus introverted leaders, they were better for people who, or employees who, who were more assertive and proactive. So they were able to sit back and kind of listen and help mold and shape these ideas of more, you know, these assertive, more proactive employees. And so that introverted leader um, had more success in that environment. And so they were saying, you know, it depends on the situation. It depends on the context, who's going to be a better leader in certain situations. David, did you have any ideas on that? I can kind of see that. Do you kind of see that in your own um, life that extroverted leaders tend to be more successful in some situations where introverted leaders, maybe other organizations are better, have those well, kind of leaders have better ideas? I have a, 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 a story in my work. Uh, <laughs> I have an um, uh, extrovert uh, chief and <laughs> sometimes it's not the best thing because uh, for this precise, uh, this kind of uh, way of, uh, of being, uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's difficult to express the, the things, the, the problems of the, of the, of the work, uh, because 
uh, she is uh, always busy uh, talking with uh, people, uh, uh, using the, 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 the telephone, and you, <laughs> you um, always uh, think that she is uh, pay attention uh, about the things that we are talking about. And <laughs> I think that sometimes it's, 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 it's difficult. Sometimes yeah. if you have a, a, a leader uh, introvert, maybe you are sure that she or he is thinking about what you are saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is my, my comment that, but not always, it's not a whole big thing, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's different. You're absolutely right, though, that like if if you have a leader that is more willing to listen and take the time and things, then your ideas, you're you're more willing to share your ideas and and express your ideas and and those might be used more in the that environment instead of in a more extroverted leader who says, okay, this is what needs to happen. My ideas, you know, here are all my ideas and go ahead and I'm going to, I'm too busy to listen to what you have to say <laughs> kind of ideas. So that can yeah. be counterproductive, right? I totally agree with David. It's uh, extroverts usually tr always try to overlook all the other opinions. They just uh, focus on their, you know, they are self-assured and they are focused on their way, the manner, how things should be done. So usually the, I never got uh, a clue why there are always a, a suggestion box, uh, boxes as, uh, for suggestion or some stuff for uh, everywhere in the companies and everywhere. So I thought, I was just thinking like, why don't people just go and talk to, to the boss, okay? I do this, do that. I suggest this. I suggest that. I never. It didn't make any sense for me. That why, why should I write something and put it in a box? Uh, and t till I read this, this book about uh, introverts and extroverts. So introverts, they are not that good in expressing themselves. And maybe the boss won't listen because he's himself an extrovert and he would try to, you know, uh, to to make the others as little as uh, his ego his ego can. So. Uh, uh, sometimes these people are not just extroverts; they are egoic, and they. Oh, I'm just really sorry. curious. Sorry, I'm going to uh, butt in here a little bit. Carmen had a, a reaction to something you were saying, and I'm kind of curious what her reaction is because she goes mm, like she didn't agree. So I want to hear what Carmen <laughs> was thinking. I I have to oppose against uh, <laughs> uh, what he said. Uh, introverts are not really able to express them themselves. Okay, go ahead. So that, that, that's not true. So uh, this goes into shyness. So a shy person is not able to express, to, to say what uh, the person wants to say. An introvert uh, just makes first a decision, is it worth uh, uh, to say something or uh, should, you leave, uh, should you better uh, shut your mouth? So um, um, I would not say an introvert uh, would not make suggestions and would, would not be able to go to to his uh, its leader, uh, his, his boss. Um, okay. um, um, sometimes the person makes the decision. Okay, there's nothing to change, so it's not worth to go and to tell him. So this is the only thing I have to, uh, I disagree. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I think that the idea there is that, that the wording that he used of they're not able to express themselves, that was something that kind of struck something in you. Yes. And it's yeah. not necessarily that you're not able, but it's that you are thoughtful about how and when and if that those comments or those suggestions yeah, are and worthwhile to express. Yes, yeah. and, and on top, an introvert person uh, uh, thinks before uh, the person acts uh, about the results, what, what's going to be by uh, performing a specific action. So yeah. 
And okay. an extrovert person would not do that. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? Um, and so if I have to say something and I think, oh, uh, there's nothing going to change or uh, there will be a huge uh, reaction uh, to this. Uh, so it's it might be not worth uh, um, putting a trigger for something like that. Yeah. So well, uh, but I, I wanted to say something about uh, the discussion that an extroverted leader uh, goes better with passive employees and introverted leaders go better with, with active employees. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, with every other trait in a person's life. Uh, uh, if something is missing in your, um, uh, let's say, in, in your toolbox, what, what you can do or what you are willing to do, then you go better together with somebody who can provide that. So it's not just uh, uh, your mindset or, or how you act and how you how you uh, deal with other people. Uh, if you are not able to, uh, to cook a dinner, so you partner up with somebody who, who would cook for you. Yes. So. Yes. And so they do find, like later in the book, we do talk about how opposites attract. Is yeah. that you do find yeah. people who more extroverted, you know, maybe husbands tend to, and may, may have more of an introverted wife or vice versa, because there is a lot of complimenting that yeah. happens yeah. with each other. That, you know, the, the strengths of one and the weaknesses of one, you know, complement the strengths and the weaknesses of the other. Um, so you're absolutely right that there's, and, and having, even in an organization, having both working together is much stronger than just having one or the other. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Small right. about, can I? Yeah. I want to add something like, Susan was very clear, and I, I love that in here that people try to sell their ideas, try to sell themselves. Even we have been, uh, we, we have seen this all the time, even about brainstorming. It's taught as a very effective way of uh, getting new ideas and be creative in the college organization, in the companies everywhere. So what research has approved, as she's mentioned, uh, that uh, brainstorming uh, would uh, have uh, uh, introverts would have three or more different I can't remember now barriers of the effective uh, uh, participants in brainstorming and she found that internet brainstorming over the internet mm -hmm. would be much way better than brainstorming in so social life because there's a lot of barriers in socializing uh, about afraid to have social failure and anxiety this all will be dropped off on internet so that you can add a lot of creative ideas without the fear of being rejected or judged so the, the, that's the same thing i was talking about that the suggestion box would oh, yeah. Uh, yeah would just uh, uh, make it very simple that you don't have to write your name or whatever just put your creative idea over there and the suggestion box may make only sense for me that time I read this book because uh, this time I, re I, I could know that there are some people who are, of course, they are able to talk and express themselves, but maybe they have some other social barriers. They don't want to be rejected or judged, so they just want to be clear and they don't want to be, you know, a, a str strike a wall of social rejection or failure. So they just can express themselves freely more freely on the internet over the suggestion box or whatever uh, uh, mean that can bypass them all this social complications that's right what yeah no i think that's good because I, the suggestion box and the internet that barrier does make more sense because um you know if if an introverted personality wants to give more of like a this needs to change you know this is my suggestion on what needs to change or what needs to be different um she does talk about introverts being more sensitive and empathetic to people's feelings. And it could, you know, that can create more of a safe place or a more thoughtful, pro, you know, purposeful place to express their 
ideas in that set setting versus going face to face to someone and saying, I don't really like this that's happening versus having a more constructive way of going about it. Um, like a suggestion box or having that barrier with the internet and stuff. I, yeah, I, I can see what you're, what you're, kind of, you're saying there. Yeah. Okay. So you, we had kind of talked about this a little bit here where you're talking about more of the, the group um, environment versus working alone. Um, and so American corporate culture, a lot of times what happens is there's kind of this open plan workspace where there's cubicle, you know, cubicles, but, but they've kind of shifted, corporate culture has shifted where there is more open space, they want people to collaborate, they want people to work together. And what Susan is suggesting is that that's not when our most important work happens. Our most important work is done alone. And yeah, there does need to be some collaboration with our, our employees, but she says, it's during undisturbed alone time that skills deepen, genuine insights emerge, and real progress is made. The simple act of being interrupted is one of the largest barriers to productiv productivity in the workplace. Have you guys found this? Uh, and I don't know what your kind of work setting is, um, but um, what are kind of your thoughts on kind of more of that open, work environment where you kind of are interrupted frequently versus being able to get in and have enough alone time to, to focus. David, do you have some thoughts? Uh, I would like to say that this is a rule for me. Okay. <laughs> because my, my kind of work, uh, we need to think the things, uh, read uh, a lot, mm -hmm. uh, scientific articles and and elaborate uh, conclusions and um, and make a proposal mm -hmm. to to do something. So this process is uh, a little more effective if you think alone. So okay. if any little thing interrupts uh, interrupts mm -hmm. something is difficult to to be productive so yeah. for me, this is a very important rule for, for my work mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah so you you've experienced this that this has to happen for you to get your work done <laughs> mm -hmm. yes and what she's you know what what she kind of refers to is a mix of both really is best because because david you have opportunities i'm sure you have opportunities to collaborate with your colleagues and to kind of think through and talk through some different research but when it's time to write a proposal or it's time to you really dive in deep then you have that alone time to go there so is yeah. that yeah well the the last uh, uh, paragraph is mm -hmm. very important because yes not only uh, alone completely you need a uh, uh, a little spaces where you share your thinking. <laughs> yes. I mean, in, in this sense, it's better to, to, to have a mix, but you need a, a long time to be alone, to, yes. to be productive, and then to share with other people and uh, obtain a product. Mm -hmm. this, this is the, the, the final, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go through quickly a little bit where she talks about kind of the nature versus nurture. She talks about she has these experiments that she does with babies and certain stimuli and they were able to identify that calm inf infants kind of have this more extroverted personality with than you know and they're they're kind of low reactives. And I'm not going to dive in too much of this. I think there's some other things that are a little bit more um, but one thing she talks about is those personalities and those in the more introverted personalities, the high reactives is, is what she calls them, you really need the right environment to thrive. And we've talked about this a little bit so far, but the dandelions versus the orchids, the dandelions can kind of pop up and, and 
flourish wherever, you know, and, and bloom wherever they, they are planted or wherever they happen to be. Whereas orchids really need the, these are type of flowers. They have to have the right environment to thrive. And so this orchid hypo hypothesis is talking about with those more introverted personalities, we need to be aware of that environment and nurturing that environment so that they can thrive um, the best that they, they're able. Um, we uh, talk about, so there's the biological predisposition and the idea that she was presenting is that we can change who we are, but kind of only to a certain degree. And, you know, and that's something that we can kind of talk about a little bit, but we do have a little bit of a biological predisposition um, in our reactive state, kind of what causes more stress or anxiety than other situations. And, um, and that there's this sweet spot that we can have. And I thought it was interesting because we talk about, like, we gotta get out of our comfort zone. We gotta get out of our comfort zone to do great things. And she's saying, there's kind of this sweet spot that you wanna spend most of your time, not that you can't get out of your comfort zone at times, but you wanna find a spot that is not too boring, you know, an environment that's not too boring and not too overwhelming. Because if you don't, there's some, there's some even physical reactions that happen. You're not as healthy physically, you're not as healthy emotionally or um, spiritually, it, that it creates this disruption in us. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of jump, there's kind of, we were kind of in part two with nature and nurture here. And, but talking about the sweet spot made me think of later on in the book where she talks about free trait theory. And I don't think, this was kind of later on in the book, so I didn't even get reading, I didn't get to the part reading about it, but as I was researching, I was able to read enough about it. Um, but she talks about individuals can take on different characteristics of a different personality, personality style for small spurts of time, but at a price. And it, it kind of exhausts our energy when we do that. So what she's saying is that when we stay, we have that kind of that sweet spot of not too, not too overstimulating or not too understimulating that we will thrive best. Um, we can get outside of that at times, but it's kind of like sprinting. You know, you don't want to sprint for miles and miles. That will be too exhausting for you. But if you can kind of sprint for a short distance and then come back to that sweet spot and then go sprint and then come back, then that's where our, we are most successful, will be most successful. So understanding our personality enough to know where that sweet spot is for ourselves so that we can exert ourselves in areas that are important for us, but then have more of that calm, you know, that environment that's more um, calming for us. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I love the way Susan could refer things to its biological evidence. Mm -hmm. Like when you talked about the sweet spot, she talked about the reticular activating system, how it mm -hmm. connects uh, the brain with the body. And mm -hmm. she said that about different people uh, with different stimulus mm -hmm. to uh, make them, you know, stimulated. So as she said that infants who are extra, uh, more to be introvert, uh, they are overstimulated mm -hmm. uh, and they would be overreacting. Mm -hmm. So a small stimulus would be enough to keep them in the, sm in the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. That's why I guess introverts, being in the circuit of extroverts would be exhausted easily because extroverts need more of a stimulus mm -hmm. to be really in charge. So taking this to a biological level, that's really amazing. I couldn't jump that easily because I would focus on how she uh, analyzed that according to the neuroscience. Mm -hmm. So she talked about trust, limbic system, and uh, about the very center in the limbic system that's able to uh, overreacting. And that's really interesting for me. Even yeah. if you take it more to about functional MRI and how mm -hmm. they found that uh, neo, neo brain, uh, neo cortex uh, wa was the invention, was the thing that uh, advanced mammals could uh, develop so that they can keep their uh, limbic system in check 
Mm -hmm. They're controlling their uh, very impulsive and reactive uh, brain through uh, a more adaptive brain, which is the new new brain, ne neocortex. Mm -hmm. So th that's really interesting how she yeah. could take these theories back to its neuroscience. That's really amazing. It's really yeah. good work for us. So, so it helps us really understand that it's not just uh, just because they're you know, not willing to do it or not willing to be in that situation or they don't like it or anything like that. It's just, it's by a lot of it is biological and that there is a, there is a very, um, a chemical reaction happening, you know, in our brains based on our, where, where we fall on that introvert extrovert, um, scale. Yeah. Yeah. It does help understand it more. Okay. So, um, so we talk about kind of we can get outside of that comfort zone or outside of that sweet spot for short periods of time. Um, so how is this done? And she talks about this idea of self-monitoring. So in, she talks, says individuals who are adept at self-monitoring, monitoring, sorry, I have to kind of self-monitoring are able to change their persona to fit the demands of a given situation, even if it means going against their natural tendencies. Self-monitoring can be much easier when one is acting according to with core beliefs. So I think Carmen, this kind of touches a lot on what you're talking about is that is that you're not shy, you're you're strong in what you believe. You might not have to tell out the world about it all the time, <laughs> but you're strong in what you believe. And when it comes to it, you you know, you're fine expressing your opinion and expressing sure. your ideas and you have no problem with that and no. it, probably more so when it's in alliance with your real core beliefs right yes yeah correct so it kind of strikes that you know even your reaction to what radwan was saying i could see see this reaction in you and it kind of struck something in your core belief and so you wanted to speak up about that you know, I can tell you kind of wanted to speak up about that and then you were able to kind of talk through your understanding, you know, your opinion about that. And yeah. so it just helped me understand that, you know, you, you've been able to get good at this self-monitoring um, and kind of get into that place where, yeah, I'm, all, I'm fine expressing my opinion and, and, and speaking up and doing, doing that when, when it really is important to me. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I think that's an important, um, important thing to understand is that we do want to get outside of ourselves. We do want to express our ideas. We do need to kind of do that. And the better we are at this self monitoring and being in that sweet spot, but being able to self monitor and kind of get into those situations when it's important to us, you know, kind of helps us further our our capacity or further our whatever purpose or goals that we are working towards. Um, let me think. Okay, so that's just kind of that same idea. Um, so then she gets, uh, Susan Cain kind of talks about empathy, okay? And with introverts, empathy is one of their greatest strengths. And, um, she says, not only intellectually understanding what other people feel, but also um, to feel what they feel. Introverts feel things more deeply and may be more affected than extroverts by feelings and ideas. How do both of you, David and Carmen, how do you, in, how do you feel like you fall in this? If you're more on the introvert side of things, do you, do you, uh, does this kind of hit you as like, yes, I, I do have more empathy, I do feel more empathy? For people or what are your kind of thoughts there? Yes, yeah, so I, I said it before, uh, I always think first what uh, uh, what the reaction of another person would be when I do or say something yeah. to that person. So uh, I, I always think how would I feel when somebody would do something like uh, to me. So. Yeah. So uh, I, it's always a an interconnection between me and the other people. Yeah, 
Good. Oh. I like how you say that. An interconnection between me and the other person is that you're conscious of what that other person might be yeah, feeling, yeah. Say, if, depending on what you say. What about you, David? Uh, well, I uh, um, about the 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 this. Text. Yeah, empathy. Yeah, empathy, and kind of what how, what's been your experience as far as that feeling of empathy with others. Well, in Tobit, uh, I'm. I agree that introverts feel things more deeply. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah. well, at least in my case, if somebody uh, speaks uh, and I'm uh, waiting for for hear all the idea, I'm. Uh, this is uh, an indication that I'm open uh, about the idea. And it's the same thing that if the other person uh, wait when I am speaking. And yeah. Yes, and this is the idea that I have uh, about the introvert uh, people. Mm -hmm. uh, when, uh, when we are talking about something. Yeah. And it, it, it just made me think that introverts tend to be better listeners. And I think this idea of empathy is because they know that it feels good to be listened, you know, when someone listens to them, they know that it feels good to be understood. It feels good to have um, someone really care enough to listen and that that listening, um, you know, really is a big deal. <laughs> and when you can, share that with someone and, and listen to someone, you recognize that that's important and that that's gonna help them feel more understood and more connected. Yeah, I think that's, that is a great strength of intro, uh, introverts. Um, okay, so, oh, they, she gives an example of Al Gore and how um, Al Gore is an introvert. He's a pub, uh, politician here in the US. And um, he has been really important in the um, kind of the movement of global warming and helping people understand the importance of global warming and the effects it's having on, on our planet. And he, one thing that he realized is that because he's more sensitive to this information, he was like, why, is not, why isn't everyone ex so excited and so like really moved by, by um, this information about global warming, why aren't other politicians doing something about this? And he had to recognize that he's more sensitive to this important information than some of his more extroverted politician friends. And he also realized that he had to step out of his comfort zone to successfully communicate this concern to a broader audience. So I think this describes Susan Cain quite a bit too. And Rodwan had said he, she, she was able to sell thousands and millions of books. Um, her as an introvert, she did have to step out of her comfort zone and speak to audiences and do a TED talk and, and do this public release of her book and really had to promote it and sell it even though that is not her comfort zone. That is not her personality. That is not where she, like, that's not her sweet spot. But she knew that if she were going to spread her ideas and concerns to a broader audience, she would have to step out of that comfort zone. Um, what kind of ideas do you guys have on that? I think that was an important idea for me to kind of understand or to think about and just in my own life is that there are certain situations where I am more introverted, but when it's something that I'm passionate about when I want people, you know, to hear about, it does push me out of that more introverted and more into that extroverted personality for myself. What have you guys found with your, in your life? Have you found that, that situation come up? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I'm uh, sure it, it, it yeah. comes out once in a while, mm -hmm. uh, especially in uh, the field I used to work. I'm in computers and I'm a female and I've, I'm five, five feet tall. 
or thought. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I work together with, uh, with male colleagues. Um, so I had male colleagues and uh, uh, once in a while you, I had to step up and to con convince them, okay, my idea is probably the better one. Mm -hmm. But as I said before, I, uh, when I feel it's not worth to do it, then I won't do it. Right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does take those situations like, no, this is important enough that I need yeah. to make sure yeah. that this, yeah. this is known. That's good. And that's good. And I think that's the quality that we're looking for is that, yeah, it's, okay, you know, introversion and, and being more introspective and all this stuff is really good. What we have to make sure is that it's not, um, that it's not keeping us from doing that and that we are able to develop that skill set to say, no, when it is important, and when I need to, you know, need to be more assertive, I have that skill set and I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, and we're, uh, we're going to kind of keep going probably for another 15 minutes, but I, are you guys okay going yeah. a little bit longer? Yeah. I, I need to, to. Oh, you need to go. Okay. Yeah, I understand. We, I had said an hour for this, so. Sorry. Thank you, David. It's great to have you here, and uh, thank you for your thoughts. Thank you. Bye. Uh -huh. Bye. All right, good. So just a couple of more ideas here. Uh, so she talks about extroversion is not an universal ideal, and I thought it was interesting. She talks, she talks a little bit more of about Asian societies, and they emphasize more of this introverted quality um, of patience, calm, thoughtful, listening and thoughtful speaking. Um, a common saying in the Western world is the squeaky wheel gets the grease, the most, the, which is referring to, you know, if you're loud and if you're kind of obnoxious about it <laughs> and, you know, about expressing your idea, you're going to get the response. You're going to get the, what you're looking for. Okay. That squeaky wheel gets the grease. Whereas in Eastern philosophy, there's a couple of ideas, I, uh, a couple of common sayings that say, the wind howls, but the mountain remains still. And actually, Carmen, when you were saying that, it's like, everything, everybody around me can be whoever they want, but I'm going to be who I am. Yes. <laughs> so the wind howls, but the mountain remains still. <laughs> okay. And those who do not speak, or those who know do not speak, those who speak do not know. So that's, a, that's one of those uh, philosophies there in, uh, in more of the Eastern, uh, uh, Eastern world, okay? So it's kind of interesting, you kind of get, it's not universal that this, this extroversion, extrovert ideal is, um, is more prevalent. It, it may change from different parts in the world. So from where you guys are, or where you live, do you feel like there's more of an extrovert ideal or introvert ideal in more of your, you know, your country of origin and, and your culture? What do you think, uh, Radwan? It's, I guess, um, the trend nowadays is for extroverts. Mm -hmm. So everybody just like, you know, give them higher status than others. Mm -hmm. But I was struck by the uh, by the example she has given about the prophet uh, Moses mm -hmm. and how he was being an introvert, mm -hmm. completely introvert. Even he has some problem with articulating and he asked help from his brother. So right. God gave him his brother to help him communicate with the, with the, with the, with the Pharaoh, Pharaoh and his people. So he was able to be a good leader for 40 or more years in a desert of his own people and uh, one of among the most successful leaders in the earth and uh, the, the whole time uh, so i believe introverts can be great leaders they they should be evaluated and uh, you know should they should take their chances as equally as extroverts so mm -hmm. uh, Introverts are a very important component of the society, and uh, they should uh, they should be they should take their uh, role. Yeah, absolutely. What about your in your kind of cu culture and things, Carmen? What a, what's the in, ideal? Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. An Arab world, like you know, sometimes it's striking. Like for example, we we connect. For example, um, 
you know, riding horses. We usually connect this image with uh, with a model of a very brave man who can ride the horse so quickly, control it, and uh, jump over bows and try to, to to fight in the battle and stuff like that. So this all the imaginary idea going on. But when I went to the States, I ride horses with uh, female with women who are really very good riders. And then I learned from them a lot. So what I try to bring back with me when I came to Jordan, that, uh, you know, it's just like, it's, it's not the role model of extroverts or uh, uh, it's just like kind of uh, discrimination, as you yeah. say, men better than women in riding horses. You can say extroverts are better than introverts in, in, in leading companies. So it's the same. Yeah. So we need to deal equally with everything. Yeah. Yeah. That concept of it doesn't matter what we're discriminating, you know, if we're putting one above the other and things, we need to kind of rethink, rethink where we're, our thoughts are and where our biases. Yeah. Excellent. Any thoughts, Carmen? Oh, well, I think um, um, Germany situation is, uh, it has changed within the last 25 years, I believe. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it has become harder, uh, you have to fight for your job, you have to be more elbow pushing and uh, people kind of learned it from, from the United, or from, from American culture. Mm. Um, um, after the war came down, um, uh, people from West Germany came to East Germany and wanted to teach East Germans how to work and stuff like that. Uh, it has changed now and it's much more uh, combined now. So there's introverts in both parts of Germany, there's extroverts in both parts. But mm -hmm. here's the thing, when I came to the United States, um, like eight or nine years ago, um, I thought, why is it that every American looks so important? And I believe this is part of your education system. So I asked my former English te teacher that question, why ha do I have the feeling every, every Amer American, regardless uh, what job he does or what assessment assignment he uh, just performs. Um, uh, he looks important in in the thing he actually does. So, and I believe this is uh, because uh, kids uh, get educated right from the beginning. Uh, uh, present yourself as smart and as a good, important person. Never, never show weakness. This is what she said to me, and I believe it is part of that. What was at the beginning of the book uh, that uh, uh, society expects from people um, being extrovert. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess that's one upside is that it does kind of force us to have more of a, more of that confidence in what yeah. we're doing and and portray that confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So the idea here, you know, at the end, she kind of wraps it up saying extroverts and introverts can, introverts can learn to better recognize, understand, and appreciate one another. Um, so some key ideas, you know, opposites attract. Parent and child, we have situations where maybe we're an extrovert parent and we have introvert children and how do we deal that or vice versa. Um, that they, there are diff, uh, differing, differing desires of social interaction and that's okay. You know, there's going to be different levels of what we want in our social interaction. You know, it's okay to have these different views. And that introverts and extroverts are going to experiencing spirits things different, you know, like going to an, a concert or something like that. An extrovert is going to come away energized. An introvert might come away depleted. You know, they're going to have different experiences and that's okay. And we, we don't necessarily need to assume or project our feelings or responses onto other people because they have, they have their own response and their own feeling. Um, and the key idea, there's nothing wrong with an introvert and uh, nature, nature, oh, nurture the natural strengths of introverts. As we, uh, as parents or teachers or community members, you know, 
we want those uh, more introverted personalities to thrive and they need that environment. They need that nurturing um, to be able to be that mountain, you know, with the wind blowing around them to be more secure in who they are um, and make sure that that's, that's communicated, that that is, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, and the, the, the key idea here from this book um, is that this book is uh, a book that invites all of us to recognize the best of who we are despite our differences, okay? And that's what I liked about this, is that let's recognize that we all are very different, but the more we understand those differences and why we are the way we are, um, both in ourselves and the people around us, the more compassion, the more love that we're going to have for people around, around us and the more success I feel like we're going to have um, in those interactions. All right. So I have a little homework here for you if you so choose, but uh, kind of taking a personality test, but taking some time and kind of reviewing your own qualities and temperaments. If, and, and it doesn't sound like either of you are in this situation, but anybody who's listening to this, if you kind of have that battle inside of you where you're not, you feel like you should be one way, then, you know, should be different than what you are. Um, I think a good, uh, a good exercise is to kind of review your qualities and your temperament and being kind and accepting and admiring yourself in that way. Write down those positive aspects of being you, you know, and, and as if you're, you are your own best friend or loving parent or devoted mentor and highlight what you like best about being you and explore how to expound, expand the, the, this menu of possibilities grant to, uh, granted to you by your temperament. And as you search through this, I think you're going to kind of find, find some really great things about yourself and kind of to ex uh, come to accept some things that maybe you thought were wrong or bad about yourself, but you realize these are actually really good strengths and, and, um, and be able to grow in those strengths. All right. All right. Any final thoughts from any of you <laughs> on this book? I... Well, it's, a, it's a very nice book. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, obviously she has put a lot of efforts and hard work, mm -hmm. dedication to make this book a bestseller. Mm -hmm. And it deserves to be a bestseller uh, quite uh, strike me in different ways mm -hmm. uh, i love the research she has been she has done i love the way she went for uh, very specified scientists and professors she okay. consulted very good educated people and good research mm -hmm. and even the subject uh, introversion and extroversion seems to be something that's not uh, usually discussed mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's it's amazing and striking to know how, how how much research was in this subject? Uh, she has mentioned a lot of neuroscientists and scientists who work about this since hundred uh, more than two hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. So it was really amazing that how uh, some people, these people themselves are introverts because you know they don't publish books and they don't talk to media. So uh, unless we had this book and we read about. Kin and Susan Kin get the courage to go to TED Talk and everywhere and to social media. Otherwise, this subject would be uh, would be only discussed in laboratories or with the scientist level. It would not go to public. So it's it's great to encourage introverts to socialize and be more extroverts, if mm -hmm. you can say. Yeah. Absolutely. And one, one idea that I didn't talk about much, but I think applies quite a bit with our students is that when you're learning a second language, sometimes you will feel more like even if you are an extroverted personality, you may become a little bit more introverted because you're not so, so confident in your, you know, your English speaking abilities. And um, I think that that's a struggle that some of our students have is that they want to be their they want to be who they are, but that language barrier keeps them from really being able to express themselves the way that they, their personality truly is. And I think that as we strength, that's another, another um, 
reason we need to really work and strengthen those language skills is because is so that your true personality really can come out and that you really can feel like you're being authentically you. Um, because when you have the words, you have the vocabulary, you have that ability in your, in your speech and in your language, it just allows you to be more authentically you. Um, I have a question for you, Annie. Yeah. Do, do you think you are an introvert? <laughs> you know, I was, I was more in that middle ground where I do love my quiet, you know, quiet time and being on my own in small groups. But it's interesting because what I'm passionate about what I do for work. I, this is, you know, what I do here. And so it doesn't bother me to get up in front of people or in front of a camera or do any of that because it's something I enjoy. I get energy from that experience. Okay. So you're ambivert. Yeah, I'm more of that ambivert. <laughs> it depends on it, how passionate I am about it, <laughs> about what I'm talking about. That's great. Uh, yeah, so it was interesting because I, I went to a TEDx event last weekend and um, it was really interesting. I, I loved it. It was very exciting. It was very energizing being in the, that environment and hearing these speeches and things. And it definitely gave me that desire to learn more of that public speaking and how to, how to deliver some of those like TED Talks and how do they do that and what, how do they craft their speeches and, um, and things. So that is something that I have a desire to do, which is more of an extrovert personality, you know, of wanting to do more public speaking. So I think it, it more because it, it speaks to that passion, you know, that I'm passionate about certain ideas and I want to mm -hmm. share those ideas exactly. with people. And that brings out more of that extrovert personality in me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even an introvert with a, a lot of passion can yeah. perform on a stage better than any other extrovert. Yes. So it's not about just uh, being energetic. It's about uh, being uh, having a lot of enthusiasm. What you what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Any kind of closing thoughts there, Carmen? Mm, I think um, uh, it's everything about a combination um, with uh, that book about the mindsets. Mm -hmm. You have a coach mindset, and you are an introvert. You are um, basically, in my eyes, you are perfect. If you have yeah. not a growth mindset, a fixed mindset, and you are an extrovert, you are, to me, you are a chaotic. Okay. Um, so an, an uh, unorganized person. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, basically what I want to say is I like that I find in every book I read uh, in the book club, I find everything, anything, I find something for me. Good. More about me. Then I, I like that. Good. Good. Carmen, you know what? <laughs> Carmen. Yeah. If she if she got to speak on TED Talks, she would be a speaker. Should she should give us both you, me and you an invitation. Yeah. I agree. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would idea. absolutely be invited to attend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> goals. We all have to have goals we're straight working for, right? <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Well, Good. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming today. It's always so fun to kind of have thank that you. interaction and get to know all of you better. Okay. All okay, right. Well, thank have you. Good rest thank of the day you. and uh, I'll announce the next book club book for the book club. It's there on the book club uh, yeah. page, but um, yeah. And we'll see you next month, hopefully. <laughs> sure. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.